to our media who are joining us via Zoom, um, feel free to re use the raise hand uh, function on Zoom, and we'll try and work at those questions for you. All right, at this time we're joined by Miami head coach Jim Larnaga, as well as Charlie Moore, Cameron Mugusty, Sam Wardenberg. Coach, if you'd like to make, make an opening statement, then we'll open up to questions. Yeah, I, I thought we uh, did a pretty darn good job in the first half of uh, playing the way we wanted to play, getting back defensively, and, uh, and scoring the ball. And, uh, you know, at halftime we had a little bit of a lead, and uh, – you know, we, we talked about what we were going to need to do in the second half. But Kansas came out in the second half and really hit us with like a knockout punch. They, they, I don't know what they, the run was, but uh, we were never able to answer uh, their scoring uh, runs. And as an end result, I think we had 36 at halftime and only ended up with, what, 50 points. So, you know, uh, the tale of two halves. Uh, we did a good, great job in the first half, and they did an uh, even better job in the second half. All right, we'll take questions at this time. We have microphone holders on both sides of the room. Please raise your hand if you have a question. When you uh, ask your question, please identify yourself by name and your affiliation. We'll start on the, in the middle on the left side. Uh, Coach David Song, IUPUI, Sports Capital Journalism. Uh, like you said, this was a tale of two halves, but from a coaching standpoint, uh, what did you see Kansas doing that made them difficult to deal with in that second half? Well, every, everything we've seen from Kansas throughout the season is the same thing. They're uh, the best in the open court attacking you. And uh, when you're not scoring, it's hard to get back and set your defense. And we weren't scoring. We weren't making shots. We, we got a little anxious. And I use the expression don't play the score, play the game. But we started playing the score. We looked up at the scoreboard, and, 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 and we had fallen behind already. And I think that created some anxiety. And what ends up happening then is in, instead of settling down and executing better, we started to rush even more. And that led to a lot of runouts and fouls. We were slow getting back, and we fouled them, put them on the foul line way too often. And we ended up with Sam fouling out and Jordan Miller fouling out. Like other guys with three and four fouls. So, you know, credit goes to them. They, they stayed on the attack, and we were not able to slow them down. Go to the front row on the right. Hey, Jim, um, does it surprise you at all or that this team that had been so poised and composed, that's kind of was the trademark of this team, not getting rattled? W what was different today? Why do you think? Was it just I, I think it was the Elite Eight one thing. That's got to be taken into consideration. The other is Kansas. I mean, they are really, really good, and especially in running the floor. They've got so many terrific athletes who all can handle the ball. And then they got David McCormick on the inside who had a, a terrific, efficient game. Six for seven from the field, three for four from the foul line. He ends up with 15 points. Uh, but he put us in foul trouble. We were never able to double team him and cause him problems. Uh, because of the speed in which they move the ball and move their players around so that we're a little bit late getting to the double team. And that was true throughout the game, uh, but especially to start the second half. Go to the second row on the left. Uh, Will Mance of WPLG Miami. Uh, Coach, I know it's very fresh, 30 minutes. You just lost a game and the season ended. but. If you could take a moment to think big picture, if you've even done so with your team, whether it was after the game, and what this team, what these guys next to you, and what this run meant to you in this program. Well, I, I told the, the players afterwards, and, and I really mean it, they, they accomplished so much, not, not just in basketball, but they ignited a community. We had so much support throughout the season and especially in the NCAA tournament. And I think generating that kind of enthusiasm for the University of Miami in a, a basketball program that you have to remember uh, didn't even exist 
from 1972 to 1985. And so now we've been to the, the uh, uh, Sweet 16 uh, three times now and to the Elite Eight once uh, in the last, in this decade. And we think we're heading in the right direction. And we think we'll have the tremendous support of our administration and our community. And the, it's all a credit to these guys. What they accomplished this year, uh, being chosen uh, 12th in the preseason, but being one of the final eight teams in the entire country. Oh, my hat's off to them. I love working with them. They're a great group of kids, and then they're going to always be a part of our Miami family. Go to second row on the right. Hi, guys. Josh from Channel 7 in Miami. I, I know the faces, great careers. Just how much has it sunk in yet that this is the last time that you'll be putting on that jersey? Cameron, you want to take that? <clears throat> yeah, um, it's definitely very uh, frustrating. Um, more than anything, it just hurts because, you know, this is a close-knit group of guys. You know, we've dealt with injuries like, over the years. We get Charlie, we get Jordan, and, you know, we just have such a special season just – you know, being able to accomplish the things we did this year, you know, to lose, it just it just hurts, you know what I'm saying? Um, we, we've done a lot, we've gotten so close. I'm gonna miss playing with these guys. Charlie, you wanna add anything to that? Um, like like Cam was saying, you know, um, special group of guys, you know, we have here, you know, including the coaching staff. You know, um, really haven't hit, hit us yet, I mean, you know, to lose a game, but just knowing it's our last time going on the floor, probably, you know, take a minute. You know, uh, after we settle down and everything. But, you know, I just love these guys, man. I'm happy for the season we had. So, you know, I'm just excited, I mean, for the season we had, to be honest. Go to the front row on the left. Sam, I'll kind of let you answer that question as well. You've been through a lot with this program, and coaches talked so much about your decision to stay committed to this team. Um, for it to end here, what are your emotions? Coach has built a family environment for us in this program <coughs> ever since I got here. And that's something that's held true this season for sure. Um, I want every one of our guys to be super proud. I think it's not going to be a, you know, a couple of weeks or so until we really, it hits us that we made the Elite Eight. We made history for this program. And uh, yeah, just super proud of these guys. I want them all to be proud, hold their heads high. I just love them. Go to the back row on the right side. Andy Seligman, AP. Um, Cam, um, what was the difference, you think, for you in the, in the second half? It seemed like you were really locked in early on. Um, did they do anything specific to kind of take you out of your game? or And how comfortable did you feel early on, too? Um, they did a good job in the second half of kind of adjusting the way they were guarding <laughs> me. Um, they tried to deny me. It almost was kind of like a box in one, but it, they were just denying me, not letting me catch. Um, you know, not letting me get any clean looks. So credit to them, they came out with a um, great game plan in the second half. In the first half, I was very comfortable. I was able to get to my spots. Um, my teammates were looking for me. You know, they know when I see a couple go in that, um, you know, I could have a big night. So they just kept feeding me the ball. The coaches kept calling plays for me. And, you know, um, it was just all working out. Second row on the left side. Hey, uh, David Song again. Uh, Cameron. You're definitely, uh, all you guys are disappointed right now, but a couple of days ago, you said that you look at making the Elite Eight as a new foundation for Miami basketball, uh, you know, a school traditionally known for football, and you said you know, you're looking forward to future teams trying to beat the 2022 team's record. So, uh, yeah, just how, how much does this fuel the fire uh, for future Miami basketball players to uh, try to reach those even greater heights, like you said? Yeah, um, I told all the younger guys in the, in the locker room, um, after I told them I loved them, I told them to, you know, take care of this place for the next three years that y'all are here. Um, <clears throat> you know, just being able to accomplish what we accomplished this year. Um, now teams coming in or new teams two or three years down the line, you know, that Elite Eight is going to be the goal. And that's what we were able to do this year. And I'm just so happy for us. Um, I love these guys. I love playing with them. It's just... It's been a crazy up and down season, but uh, just it's good to be able to, like Coach L said, get the community involved, um, get all of the school involved. You know that they had a watch party at um, on campus at one of these rush at uh, the rat. So it's just you know little things like that being able to bring together a group of guys, a community, and coaching staff. It's just it's just amazing what we did, and um, hopefully, you know, 
teams can go to the Final Four. Back in the front on the right side. Sam, can you talk about what, what do you think happened in the second half? I mean, did you – there were some mistakes from your team right away, kind of like three or four, and then, you know, what do you think was different in the second half? Yeah, uh, Coach Al really hit on it. Uh, we started to play the score, not the game, like we've been doing all uh, – you know, we've been playing the game, not worrying about the score, even when we were up for the first few games of the tournament, but that's where we, where we really went uh, this game, started looking at that score and – yeah, kind of started rushing things and whatnot, really, not really playing to our game. But uh, full credit to Kansas as well. That's that's a great team there. I uh, wish them luck in their games coming up. Uh, yeah. Go to the front row on the left. Ruthie Polinski, NBC6 Miami. Um, Coach, you shared a nice embrace with Charlie and Cam when they came off the court. A um, couple seconds, felt like probably five minutes. But can you share kind of your message to them, to those two guys, and what they mean to this program? Um, I, I spend uh, a, a lot of time uh, trying to bring the right coaches and players to the University of Miami in our basketball program. Certain characteristics in those individuals. My staff is great. They then go out and recruit players who they think fit. Cam was a transfer student. Charlie's a transfer student. A lot of times those guys have a mindset of their own and it's not normally about the team. But unlike some transfers, these guys immediately became friends on the court, off the court. They played well together, they shared the ball. And from a coaching standpoint, what you're really looking for is togetherness. Guys who are gonna pull together, not pull apart. And that's what these guys have done all season long. And as a coach, kind of as, as the surrogate parent, because they're both so far away from home, you fall in love with that attitude. They have a great attitude, a great work ethic, and they behave in a first-class manner. They are great role models for our program, for our university, and for any other student athlete, whether you're in high school or college. They're, they're great people, and you can throw Sam in there as well. I didn't get to hug him. He fouled out. I will say this. Can I add something sure, to that? Absolutely. You know, we lost by 26 points. But to try to explain the value of a Sam Wardenberg, when he was on the court for his 27 minutes and 38 seconds, we were minus three. Meaning that if we could have kept Sam on the court a lot longer into that 35, 37, this might have been a two possession or one possession game at the end but he's such an integral part of what we do at both ends of the court that my coaching staff will be putting together an instructional video on how to play at both ends of the court with Sam Wardenberg being the featured illustrator. Got time for two more questions. We'll go on the right side. Uh, Josh Moser, Channel 7 for Cam. I know this is a tough moment right now, but what are you most proud of? Um, I'm just proud of, you know, our togetherness and how far we came, you know. Um, looking back in our tournament in Orlando, UCF lost. We could have easily went our separate ways, been mad at each other, argue, complain. But instead, we, we grew from that, you know. Um, we all took that, that, that whooping together. And we all agreed that, you know, we got to get better. We got to do something different. We don't want to end our season like this. We don't want to not make the tournament. We don't want to, you know, not be a team over 500. And I'm just so proud of the fight that we have. We've had so many games where we're down by 15, 20 points and with less than six, seven minutes left and we come back and win. You know, that just goes to show how together we are, the bond we have. You know, this is a bond and a brotherhood that I'll never forget. Um, so that's what I'm most appreciative for this year. Last question from the far left, third row. Michael Euro, Third Row Five Sports. Coach, you've had some great point guards during your tenure in Miami. You know, Shane Larkin and Angel Rodriguez. Where does Charlie Moore rank in that list? Well, you're talk, talking about degrees of greatness in my mind. You know, those, those guys that you mentioned, really great point guards. And Charlie is right there with them. I, I wouldn't uh, single out anybody because what they were able to accomplish, I mean, Char Charlie nudges ahead for, for one reason. You know what it is, Charlie? We got the furthest in school history. That's exactly right, Charlie. <laughs> those, those guys finished their careers in the Sweet 16, and Charlie took us to the Elite Eight. 
Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Congratulations on your season. Thank you. Thank you. Just a reminder before we get started with Kansas that the a recording of the press conference will be available at the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com and transcripts will be provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly after the press conference and that video recording it is, is not permitted during the press conference. Thank you.
All right, we're pleased to be joined by Kansas head coach Bill Self, Ochai Abaji, Remy Martin, David McCormick, and Christian Brown. We have microphone holders on both sides of the room. If you have a question, please raise your hand and bring the microphone to you. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach Self. Well, uh, kind of a tell of two halves, obviously. We, we were very good the first half and played tight and a little bit and couldn't guard McGusky. And, and uh, for whatever reason, the uh, uh, league came off the second half and the intensity picked up defensively. And, and then we, uh, we had about two good plays turned into four, which turned into eight, which turned into 16. Uh, that, that was about as well as we could play the second half. And, you know, these guys earned it. So, so, uh, so proud of them and proud for our program. And we need about four days off. I can't wait to get to New Orleans. Take questions? The front row. Shea Will, the board, jxlands.com. For Coach Self, down six, I think, at half, and then end up winning by 26. What was your message at half, and did you see anything early in the second half where you thought maybe things were turning the corner a little bit? Anything well, specific? Well, the, the, there really wasn't. I'm, I'm not very good at those type of things. Uh, uh, you know, I told them we need to play better. But, uh, but I, I, I did tell them that K.J. Adams uh, gave us the best 29 seconds defensively than anybody did the entire uh, first half. and, and uh, you know, just challenge our guys to guard them, and uh, they did. And and the lid lid was going to come off eventually. And I think when CB, I think CB made the first three, didn't he? And and then the lid came off. And but that was a that was an impressive uh, start of the second half to go from down six to to tie it in what two minutes, and and uh, uh, and then get control of it right after that. So it, it was nothing anyone said. It was just these guys went out and did it. Go all the way to the right side. Matt Tate, Lawrence Journal World. For, for Dave and Ochai, a couple of dagger type plays. Dave, you're in one that you kind of went madman style afterwards. I, I just wonder what the emotion was like that you felt from this team after that and yourself. And then Ochai, you had the other one, the three from the corner where Jalen ran it down after the miss and threw it out to you. Did you guys feel like those were, were kind of the dagger plays, like I said? Uh, for my end one, I definitely think so. I think it was a big momentum changer just um, getting an one basket and trying to get them in foul trouble as well definitely changes the momentum and how they would need to guard us. Um, I don't know what it cut the lead to at that point, but I just know it pumped energy into the bench and everybody on the court, which makes us guard uh, better and move faster. It just helps the team all around. Uh, yeah, no, those plays like that is, uh, you know, those, those plays that we need. Um, David's M1 and then my three, uh, those are just, you know, plays that we need in, in the second half to, to get us momentum moving forward. So, um, you know, once we, once we, you know, made those plays, it was just like, you know, no looking back. Go to the second row in the center aisle. Uh, good afternoon, David Song, IUPUI Sports Capital Journalism. First of all, congratulations on the win. And uh, second, uh, for Coach Self, you guys took on a team that's one of the best transition offenses in the nation, and you ended up outperforming them 17 to 10 in fast break points, among a lot of other things. So from a coaching standpoint, uh, what did you see uh, in the second half that your team did well that Miami could not deal with? Well, I, I think you know Miami is very good in transition, but you know that's been one thing that we've been pretty good at ourselves all year long. I, I think the you know the, the first half there weren't as many opportunities to run because we took the ball out of bounds. Uh, too often off, off makes and the second half, you know, we, I don't know what it was, but we controlled the defensive glass and their shooting percentage went down. So there were more opportunities to run off misses and and we did we, we did get out and run very well the second half. Go to the first row on the far right. Yeah, Christian, you had the dunk to bring it to 40 40 and the three to make it 43 40 like Bill alluded to from your own perspective. Could you tell how critical those plays were in the moment? Yeah, I think that um, we just need some energy from, you know, from anything. And I know that when I hit that three, um, it was definitely a big confidence booster for me. Um, I'm sure it was the same for the team. Um, we just need some energy. I thought we were flat in the first half. Uh, and, you know, those, that shot in the dunk, um, you know, I know it helped me. And I think it helped the team um, just get going. First row center round. What did you guys feel that first half internally? Oh, Chai, you want to take it? Yeah, um, I, we felt, you know, um, that we obviously could have played better. Um, I think we, we had a lot of opportunities in that first half to, to, you know, to score. We had open looks, so it wasn't, you know, a matter of uh, we weren't getting those open looks. It was just a matter of us not, you know, making a shot. So I'm um, going to the second half. It was just like, you know, um, the lid's going to come off at some point. Just keep guarding and then, you know, focus in on guarding better, and then the offense is going to come. Bill said, he's, Bill said he's not very good 
at those kinds of things, is alluding to halftime speeches, I think. What, what was your uh, guys' perspective of that? And, and CB, I wondered for you, um, he's been telling you for your whole career to, to shoot the three, and you turned some down the, the fir first half. And that was a quick trigger on a, that uh, dribble handoff, just, just kind of, you know, was that, was that message ringing in, in your ear after? I, I passed the one that was wide open in the first half. Um, that I, everybody tells me that though. It's not just coach. Um, when I'm open shooting, I know I know I can shoot the ball well. Um, so I got you know I got to step up and knock those down, and especially when the team you know wasn't wasn't shooting very well. Um, but we needed we needed one like that. Um, so it was good to see the ball go in the hole. Oh um, yeah, at halftime it was just basically a matter of you know um, kind of just a challenge against us. Um, we didn't come this far to to lay down or. Or to you know give up at this point, so um, just going out there and then playing our style of basketball, basically. Uh, kind of something like that. Go to the second row on the left. Uh, Ochai, what does this moment mean for you? Uh, I mean, senior year here, the, the regular season you had, and obviously the tournament hasn't gone the way you wanted to until today to, to play like you want to, especially in that second half. Um, it means a lot. Um, you know, it all all hasn't really set in yet. Uh, I think it will once we get back to Lawrence, but. I'm just proud of my team. I'm just proud of, uh, obviously, Coach Self. And you know, it's, it's great for the program and, and the university. But um, you know, we're not done yet. And I'm not satisfied yet with this. Uh, and I know my teammates aren't either. Second row, center aisle. Christian and David, for both of you guys, uh, along those lines, you all were on a team a couple of years ago that had a real chance to get this far. And it was taken away from you and everybody else uh, by the pandemic. What do you remember about your emotions back in 2020, uh, being on a part of a team that was number one in the nation for a while? And then being able to, how does that compare to where you are now? And how much has that kind of maybe driven you to get back here? David, want to go first? Um, it was definitely a heartbreak feeling knowing that we uh, definitely clawed our way to the top that year. And we just had a lot of great pieces and felt like we could go really far in the tournament. Um, now this year just feels like we're kind of avenging that year. Now that we have the opportunity, we're going to make the most of it and just continue to uh, grow as a team with each game. and. Um, just do what we weren't able to do or didn't have the opportunity to do uh, within that 2020 year. Yeah, I said the same thing. I think that um, <clears throat> we, we all knew we were a pretty good team that year. Um, we were number one for a long time. Um, so, you know, for it to get canceled like that uh, kind of sucked uh, for a while. But I would say that, you know, this team losing that game last year in the tournament um, didn't feel good for us either. So, honestly, we're doing the same thing for that team last year. You know, we had a lot of some of the same guys. We got Remy. Um, but, you know, we just wanted to get back for, you know, our performance in the tournament last year. So it feels good to go on this run. Go to the far right side on the fourth row. Sure. Braxton Jones, KWCH. Um, Ochai and, and CB, after the Big 12 tournament, you guys said that the celebration was short. You guys were already talking about the next step, you know, six more, CB had mentioned. How quick is that uh, switch kind of flipped now? Are you guys already saying, hey, we're not done yet? Or how long do you enjoy this one still? Um, you know, on the podium in Kansas City, uh, like you know, like we were saying, uh, we weren't done yet. Obviously, we, we had more to, to accomplish with six more. But um, on this podium um, here, it was just like, uh, you know, we've gotten to this point, and now it's, uh, now it's just roll the ball out there and go play um, in the Final Four. So we're just, we're just happy to be here. Go to the back in the center aisle on the left. Uh, Jay Cohen, Associated Press. Uh, Bill, a lot of, you got a lot of great play, obviously, from a lot of different players in the second half. But did, did you feel like David McCormick's intensity at the beginning of the second half may have kind of sparked the, the rest of the team, you know, at the beginning? And then, David, was that something you set out to do coming out in the second half was to kind of, you know, use your emotions and intensity to kind of help your team get back into the game? Go ahead, David. Go ahead. Uh, definitely. <clears throat> uh, my, my teammates and Coach Huff for sure puts a lot of faith in me and uh, trust me to perform and excel anytime the ball is in my hands. Um, I, uh, I just do what I can to uh, make the team better and use every opportunity to score a pass out of the post, and that's what I took advantage of, of that uh, matchup. Yeah, I think that I, I thought David was fabulous, uh, uh, and especially start the second half. And, you know, he, we had a size advantage inside, and, and, and also they were playing through some foul issues, and so that we just kept trying to throw it to him as much as possible. And, and uh, and I'll give Dave credit, but I, I, I for start of the second half. But I also think Juan uh, keyed David and, and Juan more than anybody keyed the good start to second half because Juan did such a good job defensively on McGusky. Go to the far right side, uh, Remy. Uh, early in the year, back at Allen Fieldhouse, they're chanting your name, Remy, Remy, Remy. Everybody was excited for you to be here. From that point on, you deflected. It was teammates, team, Kansas, all that. 
out there today, you're the MOP, they're chanting your name again, you got the hat, you got the net, you got all that stuff. Can you put that into perspective, just that journey and, and that feeling of hearing that out there today? Um, I mean, obviously it feels great, um, but my teammates, man, it's, it's really my teammates um, and, and coaches, man, just sticking with me through, through ups and downs and, you know, just instilling more confidence in me. Um, and it's all credit to them. I, I didn't really know um, that I won, really, when they, when they said my name. I didn't, I didn't know that was, that's what it was for, but um, uh, man, it's, I, got, I have the great, greatest teammates around me, um, greatest coaches, and I mean, what more can I ask for? Bill, uh, talked about this team believing they're good, you know, believing that they don't know that they're, you know, anything different than that. What's the significance of these guys getting there with, with that mindset? And, you know, there's this fourth team you've taken there, but, but can you just put that into perspective? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, whether it's uh, Juan or, or uh, Jay Will, who's not here, uh, uh, and Mitch, I, I, I think that those three plus these four uh, believed all along that this was, was possible if we did what we were supposed to do. I think, it's a, I think one thing that has given us a little confidence is, I mean, we, we, had, a, we had a pretty good team this year, and, and we, 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 we you know, shared the league and then won the tournament. And we kind of shared the league without having the opportunity to play Remy. And so I think Remy and his core always knew what he was capable to do to help us. Uh, but we haven't really seen it yet because he ha health hasn't allowed it. And I think that our guys have more of a swagger now knowing what Remy can do to make us better. And, and uh, I, I don't know how you guys feel, but that it, it's, it's nice to, you know, he, he missed his first two shots today, and we're used to making his first three. Uh, uh, but it's nice to, to, to run some, some bad stuff or whatever and still have an opportunity to come away with points because he can provide that for us that we didn't have before. So I, I do think that gives us a little bit extra confidence moving forward. Go to the front row on the left. Yeah, Zach Boyer, Lawrence Journal World. Dave, I'm, I'm wondering how you, what you saw from the challenge of, of Wardenberg and Walker on tape and how that played out in this game and, and how you felt like you handled that, um, just playing a little bit more away from the basket at times. And then Bill, even you know when Mitch came in to replace him, how you thought Mitch played? Uh, I think we just really played to the scouting report, knowing what they're capable of and uh, what they can do with their offense, knowing it's a lot of isolation stuff. So. Um, Knowing that uh, Jalen would be guarding Warnerberg, uh, I helped off a lot, just uh, plugging in the paint, doing whatever I can. And um, when Miller came in the game, just things like that, I know I had to be out on the perimeter, but just as long as we communicated as a team and talked on switches and ball screens and things like that, everything else went uh, smoothly. Yeah, I, I thought uh, you know, David <coughs> kind of got the short end of the stick today in the second half on minutes. I, I didn't quite realize it like that, but that it was – because David got us off to a great start, and then we, 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 we were still going with Mitch in there. I thought Mitch played great, and I'm sure David gave you some acknowledgement that he got the short end of the stick on minutes. But, 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 the, but the reality of it is, is you know, you combine those two. That's how I'd look at it, and there's 40 minutes there, and you combine those two, and you know, I don't know what you get, but get 24 points and whatever, and very, very efficient. Uh, uh, that, was a, that was a huge that was huge in today's game, especially when we had a size advantage. Go back to the far right. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have all seen on Twitter so far, they've shut down Mass Street. I just want to know how excited are you guys to get back and celebrate with what's waiting on you there in Lawrence? <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> that's crazy. We, we see pictures all the time of, of Mass Street being full, and uh, uh, one of our compliance ladies showed us a, a picture of Mass Street being full now. So it's, it's actually crazy seeing that and you know us being the reason why. Stay there, we'll be back. <laughs> what I don't know what if we're going to mass. <laughs> no, we're not going to mass. <laughs> KU students look for a great opportunity to have a beer every now and then. So, Go to the center aisle on the left. Yeah, uh, Coach. Uh, this is for Coach and OJ also on uh, IUPI Sports Capital Journalism. Uh, Coach, you said the other day, you know, the lid's going to come off eventually. And by God, it did. Um, what does it mean for you to see o o Ochai hit his stride this game and knowing that the lid finally came off. And Ochai, what does it mean for you knowing the game just kind of came to you, you hit your stride and you, know, you put some points on the board? You know, I, I see the game maybe a little differently than a lot of folks. Uh, I think Ochai can play well without making shots. But I think to the public, that's what we depend on him to do. So uh, uh, 
I, I, I mean, I think if you have to prove your worth, whether you play good or not, if the ball goes in the hole or not, that, uh, that didn't really mean that you're the player you can be. So Oach has carried us all year long. And, and, and uh, for him to not uh, uh, get 20 or 22 in a game does not mean he's in a slump or anything like that. He, he, uh, he, he has labored offensively, I think, in large part because of how people have defended him. But, but uh, uh, and maybe we haven't done a good job getting him the ball, but I know now after the way we play the second half, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be full of confidence moving forward. Time for one last question in the front row. Hey, Coach, I'm just wondering at any point this season, maybe even privately, if you thought that this was a real possibility um, for this team to achieve this. Oh, yeah, I've, I've, I've thought all along that this was a possibility. Uh, <clears throat> but I've also thought all along that, that the margin for error wasn't such where, where uh, uh, we could uh, get loose and, 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 and have it be a probability. So uh, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I think these guys have stayed focused. They've eliminated distractions for the most part all year long. And, and, and uh, they do play for each other. And so uh, when we play the way that I think that we're capable of, play, capable of playing, I, 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 I have total faith that we can play very well. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Congratulations. Thanks. Good thank luck you. next weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To our members of the media, we want to thank everyone for being here this weekend. As a little thank you, we've got an ice cream bar set up in the back of the media room, so feel free to help yourself. You're welcome. You got it. Cheers.